Good morning. I'm Jeremy Miller. Unfortunately, I can't be there with you as I had planned. After more than two years, I finally came down with COVID. Sorry to miss your company and the grand old city of Edinburgh. At Naturalis, we have become increasingly interested in recent years in automated identification of biodiversity. Some of this is through DNA-based mechanisms, but the area I have decided to focus on is the role that museum collections can play as a source of image libraries, particularly in the realm of some of the most taxonomically challenging groups, which is why I wanted to present to you today Little Brown Bugs, Machine Learning on Challenging Collections. Records of which species have been observed where and when is becoming increasingly critical to our understanding of our changing world. Machine learning is already being used by citizen scientists to contribute to our knowledge of biodiversity. Here are some examples of insects photographed and identified using Ops Identify, a taxonomic application based on machine learning. Automated identification is already available for a variety of taxonomic groups, and it has no problem with these insects. Even when the images being identified are less than ideal, the app can be successful. But there is a large and diverse portion of the biota that is beyond the limits of what our ubiquitous smartphone cameras can easily capture. Such smaller bodied, more diverse, less distinctive and colorful groups are lagging behind. We refer to such groups collectively as little brown bugs. Libraries of images, the raw material for machine learning applications, are not currently up to the task. Here is an example of a staphylinid beetle. Uh, these are mostly in the two to five millimeter size range, often brown to black, usually inconspicuous unless you're actively searching for cryptic fauna and can be very diverse and abundant. Here, Ops Identify is not so successful, suggesting with low confidence that this could be a damselfly or possibly a wasp. Here is another example, more confidently and erroneously identified as a cockroach. When we compare the number of digital records of which species have been found where to the distribution of described species across major taxonomic groups, some clear patterns emerge. For one thing, about half the records in GBIF are for birds, which only comprise about 10,000 species worldwide, a tiny fraction of total biodiversity. But arthropods, which make up more than half of the world's known species, are represented in GBIF by a comparatively modest number of records. It's also worth pointing out that 2 billion records translates into only about four records per square kilometer of the Earth's surface, and two of these are a bird. So this raises an important question. Do the taxonomic groups that dominate the global biodiversity data sphere approximate the general pattern of biodiversity and endemism that fits across all taxonomic groups, including things like arthropods? We don't really know the answer to this question yet, but there are some indications that should raise concern. For example, a study in Australia looked at the total number of species for four taxonomic groups, insects, snails, vertebrates, and the plant family Loraceae, across a reasonably large area of wet tropical rainforests. What this Australian study found was that cryptic and diverse groups like insects and snails were good predictors of the conservation priorities of vertebrates and fair predictors for plants, but that neither plants nor vertebrates did a good job of predicting the pattern in snails and insects. This is presumably because small diverse taxonomic groups tend to have finer scale distribution patterns and higher local endemism than vertebrates and plants. So the taxonomic groups that have the greatest deficit, such as little brown bugs, may be among the highest resolution indicators of ecosystem change. And this kind of information is exactly what we as a society are going to be increasingly relying upon to assess the impacts of climate change and other Anthropocene pressures on biodiversity. So the question becomes, how can we be in to address this data deficit? Can machine learning help us amplify our capacity to monitor biodiversity change in the realm of little brown bugs? To explore this question, we have been experimenting with data covering a handful of different taxonomic groups. I'll touch on some of these later, but I will focus on the staphylinid beetle genus Stenus. These are typical examples of little brown bugs, abundant, diverse, small, and taxonomically challenging. We selected seven species to represent a spectrum of taxonomic challenges. The challenges presented to the machine learning algorithm can be visualized as three nested triangles. The smallest triangle represents three species that are challenging even to a human taxonomic specialist. Next, we add two species that are a bit more distinct, so easy for a specialist, but challenging for a novice. Finally, we added two more distinct species that really anyone paying attention could figure out. This gives us three dis discrete categories, difficult, medium, and easy. 
The numbers next to the beetles in the diagram represent the number of individuals for each species used in the various models and tests that I will be telling you about, and this will appear in the iconography throughout the presentation. This chart is built on data from GVIF on the genus Stenus, broken down by data source, and the pattern shown here is pretty typical of a lot of taxonomic groups. What we find is that human observations records, like those contributed through Ops Identify, iNaturalist, and similar sites, provide a very large number of records of relatively few species. Museum collections databases contribute a modest number of records, but these include many more species, and many species not represented in any other data source. So the challenge is to find a way to leverage some of the taxonomic knowledge in museum collections into a mechanism for more comprehensive and high-throughput biodiversity monitoring. For this project, we used beetle specimens from the Naturales Biodiversity Center collection in Leiden. Stenus beetles in natural history collections are typically mounted on pinned cards or points and stored as dry specimens. We deliberately selected specimens with a range of preservation quality as opposed to picking out the cleanest and prettiest specimens in an effort to get a realistic idea of both the power and limitations of museum collections as a source of machine learning image libraries. In addition, we experimented with images of unmounted specimens from recent field work and images from various online sources. We used the machine learning application Noose to build and test our models. Specimens were photographed both individually using a high resolution extended focus composite system and with multiple individuals together in a unit tray. Individual extended focus images are much higher in resolution, but also much more time consuming to produce than the group images. This allowed us to explore trade-offs in time, effort, and performance. The first two models I want to show consisted of exactly the same specimens, 311 in total across the seven species, photographed alternatively as extended focus images of individuals or multiple specimens in unit trays. We annotated these data sets in Noose by labeling each specimen according to its taxon. The program then builds a model based on our annotations. The program then tests a portion of the annotated specimens against the model to check and see if they can be correctly identified. The results of this test are presented in the form of a confusion matrix, which indicates which species in the test data set were misidentified as with other species. Presenting this data according to our gradient of taxonomic challenges, we see that both data sets have a modest portion of the difficult category misidentified, but that the medium and easy categories were quite accurate. Here is Noose in action, identifying some test specimens in unit trays. In this case, it makes three errors, two in the difficult category and one in the medium. Based on our modest data set, this seems quite promising. Effective machine learning applications require a large, though unspecific, number of images for each species. Scaling up to a much more massive and broadly applicable image library would be daunting based on the extended focus images because of the amount of work involved. But given the preliminary success of the unit tray images, perhaps we could expand this effort. So we imaged the entire Naturales collection of Stenus, 55 drawers worth, using the same parameters as our unit tray images. We built a model of our seven species, now consisting of more than 4,300 specimens, and generated a confusion matrix. We have preliminary results from this model. Unsurprisingly, the results of this scale are a bit more complicated. In the next phase of this project, we will be looking for a relationship between error rate in the confusion matrix and how closely related species are. The prediction here is that the AI should be more likely to make an error for closely related species than for distantly related ones. For this, we will be increasing our dataset size by yet another order of magnitude focusing on all Dutch Stenus species for which we also have DNA barcode data, about 60 species. We hope that this will help us to better understand the areas where machine learning can provide reliable, high throughput taxonomic determination power and where we really need the attention of human specialists. Applying machine learning based on museum collections to biodiversity monitoring necessarily involves the identification of newly collected specimens. So we conducted a little field work and obtained samples of four of our seven species. As has already been mentioned, museum specimens of these beetles are typically dry mounted on cards. Freshly collected specimens may be collected dry or in alcohol. So we explored the utility of our collections based model to identify unmounted specimens. This part of the study was based on our individual extended focus images. In the world of machine learning, when you build a model based on image data sampled from one source, and try to apply it to data sampled from a different source, 
you are dealing with an issue known as domain adaptation. This can be a challenge for artificial intelligence systems, and in this case, our ability to identify unmounted specimens using our museum collections-based library was quite poor. However, when we combined our fresh specimens with the museum collections library, the confusion matrix suggested significant improvement. So we built a composite library using half of the wet and dry specimens and the museum collection images. We then used this more diverse library to identify the remaining half of the field collected samples, and the results were very promising. So I think what this suggests is that image libraries based on a combination of sources, including but not limited to museum collections, can create synergies that ultimately lead to more reliable results. Extending this idea, we downloaded images of our seven species from some popular Dutch and Belgian human observation sites, as well as the bold DNA barcode database. We supplemented these with some images provided by the Natural History Museum in Rotterdam. This collection of test images is quite variable in both character and quality. The results, especially for the difficult category, are not very encouraging. However, when we again split the library in half and used part of it for training, the accuracy for the difficult species does improve somewhat. But clearly, dealing with freewheeling collections of images such as these is going to be a challenge. The previous slide was limited to images of dead specimens, as opposed to this one, which shows much the same thing, but applied to posted images of living animals. Clearly, this will be yet another important challenge, but very few images of living animals are currently available on these human observation sites, so there's not much more we can do to explore this issue at this time. I just want to briefly highlight some other aspects we are exploring at this time within the Little Brown Bugs project. The Picture Eye Conveyor Belt System is a semi-automated mechanism for taking detailed images of specimens with more modest requirements for human labor. So this imaging method could be a kind of best of both worlds if we can overcome technical obstacles. We are looking into ways to discover wrongly identified specimens in collections using our models, potentially improving the accuracy of our collections by directing human experts to particular suspicious specimens. We have a project on spiders, which are preserved in alcohol. So this represents a domain of museum collections distinct from dry mounted specimens. Another study is on bumblebees. This key group of pollinators is our most charismatic study group. One of the things we want to learn from this study is about how to combine images from multiple institutions to build a composite library. This is in preparation for a future where natural history museum collections from Europe and the world are contributing to a common image library. Automated identification based on images from museum collections material shows promise, even in taxonomically challenging small-bodied diverse groups such as beetles. We were surprised that our relatively low quality group images produced respectable results compared to the much more labor-intensive extended focus images. This encouraged us to start building some very large image libraries that would have been unrealistically resource intensive on an individual level. This also allowed us to explore a much larger set of species. There are indications that building libraries based on multiple image types may be key to the development of a robust taxonomic tool. Thanks to my colleagues at Naturales and the ARISE project and to you for your attention. Please feel free to contact me with any questions you might have. Enjoy the rest of the conference.